The next guest is something we uh, were able to contact a person who is the stepdaughter of one of the environmental giants of Kentucky. Her name, and I have to say this, her name was, is uh, Peggy Hyland, and Peggy was one of the original environmental activist teachers and she was did the she wrote the environmental laws for Kentucky oh wow as for the um, legislative research commission wonderful wonderful woman she was a good friend of mine and I, f I located her stepdaughter who is uh, dr. Laura Diana Miller um, who doesn't live here but I found her over the holidays and was able to get a little um, interview because she has written some little books for like middle school kids or mm -hmm. elementary kids uh, that not only tell about Peggy but tell about Peggy and how she lived her life which is so um, there are ways that any of us can do so Laura thank you so much for being with us Laura Diana Miller, welcome to La Vida Local, The Local Life. Thank you for inviting me. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Um, you had the good fortune of having a wonderful woman, Peggy Hyland, as a stepmother. And Peggy was one of the finest people I've ever known in my whole life, and we were good friends. She died in 2013, but you have written several little books that showed how she lived her life in an example of someone who lived life to make the world a better place and a greener place. So please tell us about Peggy and how she influenced you. Peggy was a wonderful part of our family for over 26 years. Um, she was a very caring and nice person. Um, mostly she influenced me by her example. She taught me to care about those less fortunate in the environment just by mainly her actions because that's the way she lived. And I admired that and, and tried to be um, like that in my own life. And you were probably a teenager when you when you met, or eleven years old. Eleven years old. Okay, so she had a lot of years to influence yes, you. Yes, definitely. And tell us what you do now. Um, well, mostly I am a mom. I have two daughters, Brianna and Bethany, and I also do. Um, I help my husband a little bit with his work. He's a scientist. Um, and you're a scientist too. And I was. I have. A, I study at University of Louisville in microbiology. Um, and then I also have. Uh, I do tutoring. I help uh, math and science for both high school as well as college level. And you have a PhD in yes. what? Microbiology. Okay. But you have chosen to be um, the main teacher of your children yes, too. Yes, that is a big job. That is. <laughs> is certainly a big job. So anyway, you wrote several books that are books mostly for children, what, middle school? Or? I would say it could be, is the reading level, I'd say, is as good as uh, easy for a fourth grader. Okay. Um, the ideas could be understood, I think, at about fourth grade, but better so, i say, starting the middle school age. Um, and, and are still wonderful for adults, by the way. They are, yes. 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 <laughs> let's let's talk about um, the probably the first book, Peggy's Green Day. And for starters, why did you why did you write this book? Um, the main purpose, I would say, is after she died, I wanted to give I think a gift really to the people who knew her, and that was you know particularly family and friends. So it was really just something about Peggy that could be like a keepsake for for those who knew her. And um, they are. It is, and they are, because there are three books. And uh, so I want you to tell us um, a little bit more about Peggy, about her career, and um, how she worked so diligently, especially in the um, sustainability world. Yes. Well, Peggy had a real strong interest in ecology. Um, one of her early jobs was she was actually a high school biology teacher. Mm -hmm. um, then she worked at the King Center in Nazareth, Kentucky. And there she helped set up an education program for kids where they would learn about agriculture. Um, after that, she was on the Natural Resources Committee at the Legislative Research Commission, um, and she was particularly involved in pollution control. Um, and so while she was at LRC, she continued to um, be 
involved in environmental issues because that was really important to her. And she actually wrote many of the laws that are in effect yes, right now. Isn't, I mean, that, isn't that true? She had a big impact on, you know, what goes on today. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, she was certainly recognized for that while yes. she was at L uh, LRC, which is the Legislative Research Commission. Yes. Um, so tell us about Peggy's Green Day, because that was the first one, and I know that many of her friends have this book and yes. it is being used at the Louisville Nature Center where she had once been uh, on the board. So yes. tell us about that book. Um, well, it's, it's an environmental book, and it's really about just simple things people can do to help the environment, and these are things Peggy would do because she wanted to conserve resources, take care of the environment. So in the book, I just give examples of things you can do. Kids can do it. Adults can do it. Um, like, for example, Peggy had a compost in her backyard, which we still keep up. Um, she bought organic food, and vegetables, and fruits. Um, she was really good about recycling anything that could be recycled. And those are just simple things that all of us can do um, that don't take, you know, much effort, really. Um, and so those, I think, were the things I wanted to emphasize that she did. And so it's something that we all do um, and can do, and it helps the environment. She also was a devotee of buying local. Yes, so she did. I know that she bought her, uh, from the farmer's market. Yes. And she uh, was a member of a CSA, yes. Community Supported Agriculture. Yes, Tell about that, too. Um, so, yes, she was a member of um, a cooperative um, that and she did that for many years. It's a farmer's cooperative, um, and it was really about all organic food. Um, and so she did that. She bring it home, you know, and we would make all kinds of food with it. Um, she made her favorite was green vegetables. That uh -huh. was her very favorite. So we did lots of salads and you know other vegetable dishes. Um, but what was great about it is that she was supporting um, these local farmers. She was helping them to have a better life. She was encouraging. Um, the environmental conscious way of growing mm -hmm. vegetables and produce. Um, so, you know, it was it it served many things. It helped us be healthy. It helped us um, help the environment, and it was a family thing. We all got involved in it, um, and so you know, it was just really, really special. I used to ask her about her cooking, and she said, "Oh, I help Keith, her husband, yes, your father. They, they I help Keith cook." And then I asked <laughs> Keith, and he said, "Oh, I help Peggy cook." They, they did it together. <laughs> they did it together, yes, which was great. They did, which was, you know, for them that was an important fun way, like a hobby in a sense, uh -huh. too, is to cook together. A way to spend time and together, spend time together. constructively. Yes. So, and I love the way that you portray Peggy in this book as a little vegetable. Mm -hmm. And it's yes. a little, maybe it's a pea, a pea vine, I don't know what it is. It's but It's just it's, a plant. I, I didn't really <laughs> specify which type of plant. Um, and it was really because she loved plants, uh -huh. she loved the environment, so I thought that would be like a cute way to represent her. <laughs> <laughs> it is very cute because uh, Peggy is uh, shown as this plant with a red dress on mm -hmm. and a red cap on mm -hmm. and uh, hands and legs that are like plants. Leaves, yeah, yeah. 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 they're yeah. leaves. <laughs> and uh, it, it's true all through all three books, actually, yes, with, with, the same. with uh, Peggy. And I'm sure she would have loved to be portrayed as a plant. Mm -hmm. I think so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, in the second book, communities, um, the book tells about how important community, or I'm going to use the word communities, yes. were in her life. She was such a many-faceted woman who participated in many different communities. So give us some, some examples. Um, well, like you say, there were really lots of communities. She was, you know, just so um, good about being part of many things. But see probably one of the most important communities she was involved in was um, the church actually you go to as well St. William's Church mm -hmm. um, she particularly got involved in the St. Vincent de Paul at her church and that's where they basically help needy people in the neighborhood you know with their food um, paying their bills and utilities so, yeah. utilities all that stuff and, and that was um, she helped a lot with that and that was you know was important to her she did you know other community things like she was involved in the Highland Douglas Neighborhood Association. Mm -hmm. She was involved with the Louisville Nature Center. Um, she did, like, um, you know, any kind of environmental things she was always very interested in. And her family, 
that's you know that's an important community mm -hmm. as well i think i remember her going to some uh soccer games mm -hmm. from oh yes that your nephews were that's involved right. in oh yeah she if was you had been here all that time she would have gone to your children's <laughs> of events of, yes. of course <laughs> and um I, I just thought this was a an important way that she participated in the community yes. and and i remember her especially being involved in social justice so yes. talk yes. about um, well, social justice, as you know, is really the view that everyone should uh, have equal rights, they should be treated fairly. And to Peggy, it was very important that people who were less fortunate or those who weren't being treated unfairly to have a better life. Um, and so she wanted to help them. Mm -hmm. And there's really very simple ways that you can help with social justice that Peggy did. And some examples of that would be to buy fair trade items. Oh, that was a good one. And yes. that's something that not, uh, not, not everybody understands. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. So why, don't you, why don't you just talk about that for a minute? How important is it to buy fair trade? Well, it's the idea that in certain countries, particularly third world countries, um, those people do not get to actually have their products available to sell um, because other um, they're bought up by, bought big, up by bigger corporations. Uh -huh. And so then it makes it hard for those people to have a good life. They don't have enough money to um, to live a, a, a comfortable life. And so they can't buy their own products. They can't, they? no. And so by buying the fair trade stuff, or they also you can get, Peggy will get what they call the equal exchange products mm -hmm. as well. Then those products do get sold, they get money then to live a better life, um, and so it really helps them a lot, and they can make a really big difference for those people, like sometimes the children actually have to work um, in the field instead of going to school, or, um, it's, you know, other hardships that um, will make, you know, will make their lives better by just buying the, those type of products. No. In modern day, in our neighborhood, in your neighborhood in Florida or wherever, isn't this the same, the same truth that we all experience every time we go to the grocery store? Actually, our vegetables at grocery stores are cheap. They're really cheap. Yeah. And why is that? Because of the big, the, the bigger um, producers of them can sell them cheaper. They can sell them cheaper because yes. they pay lower wages, that's right. right? Exactly. Or have yes. migrant workers mm -hmm. as that's if right. they didn't have any rights. That's, that's right. And so then that's why we have to try to make that not the case. Okay. <laughs> so that was why Peggy yes. uh, participated in a farmer's market and yes, a CSA right. to make sure that the people who grew her vegetables were um, were paid fairly. That's correct, yes. And, and so <laughs> Not many people think about That's it. right. So she was also a great volunteer. Talk a bit yes. about some of her volunteer activities. Um, well, she, she loved to volunteer. Um, she was involved in, you know, things like we're saying, anything that had to do with social justice, peace. Um, she was a big um, um, person to, to help um, the world be peaceful. She liked environmental. Um, she was... Uh, on the board of the Louisville Nature Center, was, by the way, yes. and she participated in many of those things. Uh -huh. She did. She And then my dad reminded me that she also helped with um, the Beargrass Creek. She helped to be part of like a study that helped it to be more protected. Yes, um, yes. And that was really important. Um, and like you say, she, she helped the Louisville Nature Center, um, and she was involved with other environmental um, organizations, even if it was just to um, make people... Um, more aware of it, you know. Yes. She was a letter writer too, she wasn't did. she? Oh, Talk yeah. about that as an environmental activity. Um, well, anytime she uh, had something that she wanted, like a government official to be aware of, she'd send them a letter or her a letter, and she, um, you know, wanted them maybe to recognize that those were important issues, and, and hopefully, maybe they would do things to help with that issue. Okay, so. Um, Oftentimes, she took even more active roles. Didn't she also uh, participate in walks for various uh, yes. various she things? Charities. Um, she did walks for AIDS, walks for breast cancer. Um, yeah, some peace demonstrations. All those things. She she was she volunteered her time to yeah. to help with those. That was pretty amazing. So. Um, 
all of these things are really the foundation, particularly this volunteerism. This is the foundation of a strong community and that remains vibrant for, for generations. Actually, do you think that was her intent? Yes. Um, I would say her intentions were she wanted to support local communities, but also with the hope that you could be part of a global impact. Um, so, you know, she tried what she could do right here, like mm -hmm. locally, but she always, I always admired how she had a bigger view too, that mm -hmm. it was helping if it could stretch out to the rest of the world. Yeah, well, that was very, very admirable. So, um, the third book uh, that you wrote was uh, depicted as Peggy's values in, in, and it was the name of it, is Peggy's Vegetables. So she not only believed in eating well, but in, in procuring her fruit, her food, especially fruits and vegetables, from local farmers. Why was that so important to her? Well, um, like we talked about, she was part of a farmer's cooperative. Um, and so what she was trying to do is she wanted to support the local organic farmers. And then also she wanted to be environmentally conscious with the way the food was grown. I think she did a good job mm -hmm. of that. She for, did, for sure. yes. <laughs> so um, she desc you described in, the, in that book, um, Peggy's Vegetables, about the different colors of vegetables. Talk about that, because uh, you know, even as a home economist, I never think about the colors of vegetables. I think, you know, with, that's the one thing about vegetables that makes them even more special than other foods, is there's so many pretty colors. Um, and so... I think for kids, you know, who are kind of like, oh, I don't like vegetables, um, and maybe the good way to attract them to vegetables is say, oh, wow, look at these colors, you know, you know, they've got reds and greens and yellows and orange, and so it makes it more fun and more exciting, and they will be more willing to try vegetables. After. So you think vegetables that are bright colored uh, have a greater nutritive value? And they do. I mean, the, that's just uh, the... The color is one thing, but the nutrition is the most wonderful thing about fruits and vegetables. They have tons of nutrients, and the colors are part of the chemicals within them that make them so great. So bright orange and bright green and bright red probably have more uh, nutritional value than yes. maybe potatoes yes, that are not, not quite yes, as, uh, right. as yes. vibrant. Yeah, that is so true. <laughs> so um, one of the things about that particular book that uh, I really enjoyed because it resounded in the way that I raised my own uh, five children. You have lots of pictures where you're, instead of paint or, or pencil or drawing, whatever, um, the pictures are actually made from vegetables. Mm -hmm. So uh, talk about that. Well, they, I, bet your, I bet your daughters helped you they, with that. They do. And next year, on a, a cute little personal note, is my dad, who's artistic, he actually would make uh, faces or oh. other artistic things with vegetables, and it would make Peggy smile and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was a cute thing that they did, and so as I grew up and had my own kids, I was like, oh, I'll do that too, you know, and so, and then my girls are kind of artistic as well, and so they like doing that, kind of, it's fun and creative, and then you can even eat it, yeah, you know, afterwards, yeah. you know, so it's really a fun thing. You know, when, when my kids were growing up, um, we frequently took maybe tortillas and uh, had some vegetables and maybe hummus, maybe cream cheese, mm -hmm. whatever. And then they decorated yep. their sandwich. They made their own sandwich by decorating it with, you know, some a spread that would be the protein part sure. of their meal. And then they would make eyebrows yep. out of That's whatever. <laughs> and they made eyes out of radishes. And they might not have eaten the radishes otherwise, yeah. but they That's made right. eyes out of the radishes and, you know, something or other for a nose and maybe tomatoes and then cauliflower ears mm -hmm. and all yeah. of this stuff. So yes. that makes kids really more interested it in food, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah. Um, in fact, I just had a visit from, from uh, a couple of little grandchildren who live away, and I have a picture in my kitchen of the veggie man. And the veggie <laughs> man has broccoli and kale for hair mm -hmm. and uh, and some garlic yes. with the, a braid a garlic braid hanging down and mm -hmm. peaches for cheeks yep. and um, radishes for eyes and here again cauliflower and I forget what the mouth is mm -hmm. but there are tomatoes mm -hmm. and there's all kinds of ne there's nectarines for for the chin and um, and some flowers mm -hmm. too and yep. they never went through the kitchen without saying who is that <laughs> 
That's fine, yeah. yeah. I've even found it not only for kids, but even adults, you could like, you know, bring some kind of artistic thing you made out of vegetables to like a party. Yeah. And we're like, oh wow, that's so neat, you know. And I've heard <laughs> of people having a birthday party for kids yeah. where they would give this, you know, maybe yeah. the maybe an English muffin, sure. maybe a tortilla, yeah. and let them decorate that's it, right. which was would be a wonderful party the activity. Idea and activity, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, my, we can learn a lot from kids, can't we? Yes, definitely. And you, you certainly. <laughs> And I certainly learned a lot from from Peggy and all of the things that she did. And then part of this book is is uh, vegetable recipes. Were mm -hmm. these uh, some of her recipes? Uh, some of them are. Some of them are things I know she liked to eat. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that not necessarily that she cooked. Um, but the one recipe that I would say is her favorite in the book, and, and people might like to try, is the spinach squares. And uh -huh. that was one she made fairly frequently. She would take it to gatherings. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. um, and make it, and, and that was she because, like I say, her favorite were green vegetables, uh -huh. so you know, particularly green vegetables, she liked. <laughs> and then she won some awards throughout her life, and I remember one very, very special one was after she had already retired from from LRC. Tell me about that award. Yes, that was in 2010, so she had already retired, as you said, um, and it was called the Vic Heller Junior Award. It was for excellence in public service. She was presented the award by the House of Representatives and the State Senate. Um, and it was really due to her many years. She served 26 years with the Legislative Research Commission. Um, she rose from committee staff to assistant director, then deputy director, and even acting interim director. And she was really well respected there. Um, I it was, remember that, um, Laura, because many of the legislators were at her wake and at her funeral because right. she was beloved by the, these was, people. Yes, so it was a very well deserved award. <laughs> yes, indeed it was. So, what else would you like the world to know about Peggy? Well, I would say um, all of us who knew her would say she was a very good listener, she was diplomatic, um, she was encouraging. Um, and I would say one of the things I admire the most is that she helped others without seeking or wanting credit or praise, which was a hard thing for us as humans. She to deserved be. a lot of credit she and did. praise, but she, she never saw it, did she? And she didn't need it, you know, she just, she did things because of, that was the way she wanted to live, and I really admired that. Well, as a, an environmental activist, I certainly admired her a great deal. I admired her social justice um, activities, her peacemaking activities, um, but you know, she certainly was an environmental friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. I'm a better person for having known her. I feel she that way too. Yes. One of the <laughs> finest people I've ever known yes, in my whole she, life. She so really was. Yes. It's, it's really good for me to be able to talk about her with you. Well, thank and, you. Uh, so, if anybody wanted to purchase these books, how would they do that? Um, the easiest way is go to Amazon.com. Um, you can type in my name, Laura Diana Miller, and the, to find it. And there's the three books. They're called Peggy Screen Day. Um, that's the environmental book. There's Peggy's Communities. That's the one about communities. And then there's the Peggy's Vegetables, which is all about vegetables. So. Oh, this is so good. So, And I hope people will do that because yes. if you have any children or if you knew Peggy, um, these are things that you... Not not only do you want to your family to emulate, but you will learn a lot about life yeah. from these books. Yes. So, Laura Diana Miller, thank you so much, and uh, we wish you very good luck on the rest of your career. Thank you.